Oh, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, and we have lots of stuff and things to talk about, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things, working, and Stuff and Things plays. We're going to talk about a really weird thing that happened several weeks ago where it seems as though a major fashion brand stole my voice. Really weird. We're going to get into this story, so stay tuned. I think it's going to be really interesting. And then we have two weeks worth of questions, comments, and feedback to catch up with in hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. So let's get into it. Okay, what can you look forward to on Stuff and Things working and Stuff and Things plays? Well, you should have watched, and I know most of you did watch, the episode that posted last week in which I talked about GLP's Fillmore absolutely destroying me. I think I have more comments on that video than any video I've posted in the last few years. It was crazy. Great response. So thank you for watching that. The next video coming up on Stuff and Things will be about this. My 1980s retro Polaroid Sun 600 camera. I picked this up on the cheap on eBay and I tried it out. Uh, they still make film for these cameras and so I got a couple packs of film and I shot some pictures and it was really fun. So this video will be coming this Wednesday, Monday, if you are a Patreon supporter. Everything is early on Patreon, or at least my main Stuff and Things channel videos are early and ad-free on Patreon. The next video that we'll be doing on Stuff and Things is a first impressions video for this blend. Paradoxical. Sent to us by our good friend and Patreon supporter Glenn in that amazing care package recently. This is a blend in the Birds of a Feather series by Sutliff. It's actually blended by Pear George Jensen and it has Rustica uh, tea in it. I almost said the dreaded tea word. So pretty interesting blend. I had some interesting thoughts in that first impressions video. So that will be coming up soon as well. There will be a new episode of Working this week, this coming week, and I think I am changing the day in which I post my working videos. I was posting them on Mondays at 6 a.m. Pacific time. I think based on what YouTube is telling me, I'm going to post them on Fridays now. So instead of Monday, it will be Friday, and it might be 9 a.m. Pacific, it seems like a better time. They have all these little graphs of like when people are watching your content. And it seems like that might be better. So after somebody's, if a uh, potential viewer has had a nice long day, a nice, nice work week, and then on a Friday they can watch me ugh, struggling through my construction job. So next working episode will be on Friday, not on Monday. So stay tuned for that. And it's going to be a good one. Lots of good stuff coming up on working. And then the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom series is continuing on Stuff and Things Plays, and we are getting down to it. I don't want to spoil anything, but I guess it's not really spoiling it to tell you that I have finished the game. I recorded the last episode of that series. It's not going to be airing until, I think like January 1st, maybe? But we're getting down to the wire on Tears of the Kingdom, and it remains excellent throughout. So lots of good stuff coming up on all three of the channels. All right, gang, so here's a weird story. Several weeks back, maybe even over a month ago now, I got a couple comments from an observant and concerned viewer saying, Barracuda is using your voice in one of their ads. And I thought, what? Like, I saw this message. I said, I, I, I think I wrote back and was like, oh, oh, really? What, what ad is this? And I started looking. So for those of you who don't know, Barracuda is a British brand and they make sportswear kind of. It's sort of like fashion jackets and shirts and things like that. And they've been around for a long time. I did a timeless style video on the Barracuda G9 Harrington jacket. I love the brand. I love their clothes. I love their jackets. I own two of their Harrington jackets. If you haven't watched that timeless style, you should watch it for sure. And so I was like, okay, that's weird. Did, did they take audio from one of my videos or something? What is this ad? What's going on? Nobody had ever contacted me from Barracuda or anything. 
And so I did some research and I tracked down, it wasn't really an ad, it was actually an Instagram reel. And it had been up for quite a while. Like I think it was for their spring 2023 collection. And I came across this Instagram reel. Luckily, I recorded it so I can show it to you now because you will see for reasons that I will explain in a moment that reel is no longer up. But let me just play you this and you can think, okay, does anything sound familiar here? Barracuda. Original Harrington jacket. Of all time. It's the perfect light coat if you're looking for timeless style. Pretty weird, huh? So now let me play you a clip from the Timeless Style video, my Timeless Style video, on the Barracuda G9 Harrington jacket. They all wore this, the Barracuda G9, and it just might be my favorite jacket of all time. It's the perfect light coat if you're looking for timeless style. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty weird, huh? That is me. That is definitely me. When I heard that, when I saw it for the first time, it was obvious, yes, that is my voice. They just took my voice and threw it on this Instagram reel. I thought it was hilarious because it just seemed so weird. It didn't seem to match at all. The imagery they were showing, it's these like hot young people running around London or wherever it was, the super high fashion thing. And then this American accent, like Barracuda, Barracuda, <laughs> like me, my voice saying it. And then the line that I gave at the end that was from my review of the Barracuda jacket. So I thought it was funny, but I also thought it was kind of funny that they would just take my audio without saying anything to me, asking permission. And so I, you know, reached out to a couple of people. I was like, is this normal? This doesn't seem right, right? Like a major company doing that and got some responses. A lot of people just said, oh, you should try to contact them. And so I did, I tried writing them through their customer service and it's impossible to ever get a hold of anybody who can make any sort of decision. And so finally via Instagram, I wrote and said, hey, I think you guys might've used my voice on this reel and I linked, I linked to it and everything. In the back of my mind, I was hoping maybe they would say, oh, we're sorry about that. How about some free Barracuda clothing? We'll send it to you. Unfortunately, that didn't end up happening. It took a couple days, but somebody got back to me on Instagram and said, we are so sorry. We are so very sorry. We have taken down the reel immediately, which they did. I'm lucky or I'm glad that I actually had the foresight to record it when I did. Um, and they basically explained that a third party company had been tasked with making the reel. They weren't aware of where the audio had come from. And I'm sure that what happened is I don't know, some intern somewhere or someplace. It's like, oh, we've got to do this. Oh, maybe we, we, we have these images, we have the, the video footage. It would really be good to have somebody saying the name of the product. Uh, we don't want to actually like hire someone and bring them in. We're on a deadline. Let me just do a quick little Google search. And my video comes up pretty quickly when you, when you Google Barracuda. So they watch that video. They just grabbed some audio from it. They did a little bit with the EQ to make it sound a little bit different. They mixed it into this strange soundtrack, slapped it on somebody's desk and we're like, okay, we're good. It's weird though that anyone would ever do that because eventually people are gonna notice. And obviously I have viewers out there who tell me things. <laughs> it's not like I have spies or anything, but people are gonna notice if they've watched my review and then they watch that, they're gonna notice that that's my voice. And of course I did hear about it, but I was kind of, I was a little sad that they took it down because I thought it was funny and it's funny to show people, but at least I have a recording of it for posterity. So 
I'm not mad or anything at Barracuda. I would love to work with them in the future. Like, give me some free stuff and I'll review it because it's really nice, high quality stuff. That's why I did a video on it to begin with. But yeah, pretty weird, huh? Barracuda stole my voice. They didn't, but somebody did. Interesting. All right, gang. Now it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things. You can also write to me via Patreon if you are a Patreon supporter and go right to the front of the line. You can hit that super thanks button under this video and go right to the front of the line, or you can leave comments, questions, and feedback on my YouTube videos in the comment section. We have a lot to get through this week because we have two weeks worth of videos to do. So first of all, we have feedback from not last week's Sunday Stuff and Things because it wasn't really a Sunday Stuff and Things. It was the week before. And this is from at user dash nr2dr1ph5l. And they say, Bradley, just saying, really enjoying the working channel. Reminds me of my younger days when I had calluses on my hands, a farmer's tan, and a sense of satisfaction at the end of a hard day's work. Thanks, and keep it going to 50,000. Thank you so much for the feedback. This is from at Monsieur7063. Congrats on 50,000. So I got 50,000 subs on stuff and things, not on working. We've got 1,000 on working now, so let's keep growing that as well. Congrats on 50,000. Looks like the empty space on the wall over your shoulder will have a YouTube play button on it before we know it. Maybe. We have to get to 100,000. Let's keep it going, gang. Next, from at Jericho297. Congrats on 50K. Polaroids are certainly an interesting medium. I personally don't like how modern Polaroids look. I prefer modern 35mm film, which is smaller but way better in terms of image quality and economics. But you probably remember the hassle with labs and stuff for developing. But I do it, and I love it. Um, and for the pipe, it looks okay for its age. Wear and tear is inevitable, but it'll S like yesterday, as simple as pipes are, even though overzealous Peter Pipers will try to say otherwise. Yeah, there were some comments about my uh, 1962 Dunhill Shell Briar looking ragged. Next, we have something from The Hammer of Dissidents. My solution for pipe aesthetics? I just use a lot of dark, rusticated pipes for my regular S's. Nothing to go dull or look burned. Yeah, and there's actually, there's a whole line of Costello pipes, I think they were called like Fumar or something like that, where the, the very top, the rim, was pre-darkened just to get rid of that worry completely. I like that look. Next, from at John Smith TZ7YIY, Bradley, on pipes, I have been this way almost from my beginning, essing peas. Yes, it's nice to have pipes look brand new, but it's a lot of work, especially with how much I s and I found, I found it making the hobby less enjoyable. At the end of the day, pipes are tools, and I use them as such to derive enjoyment from tea. And yeah, and that's kind of my feeling too. I want to keep them in good working order. I want to make sure that I'm not damaging them, but as far as the aesthetics, I'm not as worried. If it's like a really beautiful, like a uh, smooth Dunhill or something that has a lot of chatoyance on the surface of the wood. I want to keep that nice and polished and looking good, but I'm not too crazy anymore. Next, from at Mr. Lou Lute934, something like that. Hey Bradley, just a short message to tell you that for some happy viewers from France, or, or that you've, okay, tell you that you've for some happy viewers from France. I think it's that you have some happy viewers from France. I started the pipe hobby this summer, and you made me understand the complexity of tea blending. I've discovered some wonderful blends with you, and I recently subscribed to your working channel. It's strange to get the impression of knowing someone from the opposite side of the Atlantic. Much love from France, Loris. Thank you so much, Loris, and it is very cool. It's always amazing to me that there are people from all over the world watching me sitting in this room talking about pipes. It's very cool, so it's great to have you watching. Thank you. Next, we have some feedback from the Nick's Urban Loggers review. You guys should definitely watch that video if you haven't yet. This is from at Church Ether. I love my Red Wings, but dang, those Nick's are just a step up. Heavy duty buggers though. For your line of work, I'm not surprised you love them. Next from at AOT Sis My Hero. Got a pair of these exact boots for work last year. Will never buy another brand again. Well, possibly Whites. And Whites is another 
Pacific Northwest boot brand located in Spokane. They're actually a little older than Nick's. I think White started in early, early 1900s and Nick's was like 1960, early 1960s. Next from at DC Steiger. I took the plunge into the world of quality stitch down boots a couple of years ago. I too was hesitant because of the price and risk of not getting the correct size and fit. Now I have multiple pairs of Nicks and Whites plus some quality non-stitch down footwear like trickers. Be careful, it can be addictive. I'm going to share something here, but keep it quiet. Uh, I mean, I am gonna read it out to everybody on the internet, so hopefully you don't mind. Uh, if it gets out there, they may raise their prices and the wait time will get even longer. The best bang for your buck in the handmade stitch down boot world is Borden. They're a tiny operation located in Columbia. They do small batches and only take orders a few times a year. The materials and workmanship are fantastic. The price is modest compared to White's or Nick's. Now, I'm sorry, DC Steiger, but the word is out now. Next, from at Randall White 1336, I have a pair of Builder Pros. I've had a pair of Builder Pros for two years. Best boots I've ever owned. From at Corbin Borbin, does the higher heel need getting used to? Not really. Maybe the first time you wear them, the, the heel on those boots is, it's pretty high. I, I think it adds maybe two inches to your height with not just the heel, but with the thickness of the sole and everything. And maybe the first time you wear them, you might find yourself almost rolling them every once in a while, but it takes a day and you'll be perfectly fine. And they're really surprisingly comfortable. Next, we have some feedback. We had so much feedback from the This Pipe Blend Destroyed Me video. I think there were like 150 comments. It was insane. Thank you all so much for being so engaged with that video. Um, so I just tried to pick out some things that were kind of representative. This is from at Brett Weber 499. I'm right there with you, Bradley. I don't SAP for any of those feelings. The feeling of being like high. I don't like that feeling. And, the, and had that experience once and it was more than enough. But that was with a tin of Peterson Nutty Cut and that got thrown away. I have a jar of 2017 Fillmore aging now, but I'm rethinking trying it out. I don't think you have to worry about that because I was, I think it was around 2017, maybe slightly earlier, that I was thinking of Fillmore as a replacement for Elizabethan, and I never had any issue with it back then, so it's probably fine. Next, from at Danilo Frederic uh, Danilo Frederick E2300. That's exactly my experience with, Elizabeth, with Elizabethan mixture. And a lot of people have told me that they just can't stomach Elizabethan. It's too strong. At Roberto Donert says, I actually had the same reaction from a tin of Fillmore that a friend of mine sent me. I threw the tin away. I have essed a couple of other blends with no issues. At Schnary Dog says, I've been following your channel almost from the beginning and consider you an almost brother of sorts, so it pains me to admit how amused I was by your, your, re, your retelling of this experience. Reminded me of the poor guy from Arkansas trying to get through a review of Gawith's Brown Number no. 5. I'd like to see that. I don't think I've seen that video. Like when a buddy takes one to the cookies in gym class. We are so much alike in hating the feeling of losing control. Worst tea experience like that for me was a strong Padron cigar on an empty stomach but I managed carefully brown number five just fine. So sorry for your pain, but thanks so much for sharing. And then finally from at Zigmeister67, they will sell more than ever now, LOL. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people were like, ooh, sounds good. I'm gonna buy me a tin right now. I don't know if, if that tin was just an outlier. Maybe it was the whole recent production year of it. I'm not sure. I should get myself another tin just to see, but yeah. Crazy stuff. Thank you for all the comments. Love reading them all. Um, it's just great. It helps, it helps me make the show, basically, to be able to interact, uh, interact with you through the comments. But now it is time for the very best part of the show, and that is where I thank our Patreon supporters. Remember, if you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below, and it is much appreciated. It helps pay for the fancy camera that is filming this video, the lights that are shining upon me, blends and other products for review. We're in the midst of a drive to get $105 supporters on Patreon and every single one of you are so much appreciated. But every week we shout out those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Glenn Dunnington, Jason Buckner, MD of the North, David Godrew, Ryan McFadden, Arcturus, Ashes of the Phoenix, and Jonathan Proctor. 
and of course, the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month, people like Bob McGee. And we'll never forget our dearly departed friend and Hall of Fame member, Peter Straub. Gang, thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe here, subscribe to Working, subscribe to Stuff and Things Plays. Stay tuned for all the good stuff coming up on the channel. The Polaroid Sun 660 Instant Camera, vintage retro 80s tech. The first impressions video for Paradoxical by Sutliff, blended by Pear George Jensen. Lots of stuff coming up on Working, a brand new episode coming up this Friday. Tears of the Kingdom series continuing every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Stuff and Things Plays. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Lots of good stuff this week.